Good morning. Um, we have finished our previous lesson on setting up the MongoDB uh, and writing four simple uh, database access calls. And we have extended, we kind of followed the interface, but we didn't really define the interface and we didn't make it pluggable. So we can use either the in-memory or uh, persistent storage for our uh, web API. So that's what I would like you to do today. Uh, before we start, uh, you remember that um, in our, so again, code is on GitHub uh, at marni slash imt2681 underscore student db. That's where we left the code um, two days ago. And there was, uh, when we ran the tests, um, so if I go test, uh, especially if I do the test verbose, uh, yeah, th this one doesn't actually show it, but the verbose tests um, were indicating that we're making a call to Google and I couldn't find it uh, in the test. So I checked the test files and it looked, yeah. So it looked uh, as if we kind of getting something from Google. Uh, so, I want to check what's going on here. So what I will do is I will use a command line. So I will try to find uh, using grep which files make reference to um, to Google. So I'm using a grep command. It's available on Linux and on Macs. Um, you will probably have it in Sigwin on Windows. Uh, and then I'm doing a recursive call for the keyword Google and all the files that um, we can find. So it seems I am doing a call in the file called api underscore students. So let's let's check it. Uh, I, I tried all the test files and I was not doing any tests uh, with, with Google. But in here, um, I can also specify, so if I say, Mongrep, I can check um, because I would like to see the line number. So I can check um, what's the flag. So dash H prints the file name headers with the output lines, uh, which is something we can try. So let's try that. Um, Yes, so that's the call. We're making definitely a call to Google, but uh, we don't um, want to find lines. Print number of lines, no. Yeah, there is a lot of lines. Mm. So let's see. Ignore binary files. line number dash n excellent so what we need is we want to call this function with n all right so it's line number 56 uh, so let's have a look line number 56 if we get um if we try to call student with uh, a get instead of post, we're trying out some sort of a, um, we're doing some weird stuff here. So we will cut that off. It's probably some some leftovers from testing uh, get um, command like HTTP get, which I was trying out uh, before the lectures to see what Google is returning if you just get the Google URL. So we want to re remove that. 
we don't want this so now if I say um, if I do tests okay we're not using IOUtil so we have to cut this off oops all right all right so now we're running through all the tests we shouldn't be asking Google anything anymore we shouldn't have the weird printouts and we will have some problems um, so and oh yes uh, so the problem is I'm not running Mongo daemon I need to run Mongo daemon for the database to work so let's go and test it again and everything works fine and if I run verbose tests then all the tests are running pretty fast running well and I have this uh, duplicate key error when I'm trying to insert the same student twice uh, with the ID zero uh, ID one remember we make we adding Tom twice in one of the tests to see if the indices on the students uh, collection are set up correctly excellent so now I can commit that um, I can check what was changed only that single file so we say git commit a m fixing fixing left over google testing removing unused code okay it's actually debugging All right, we can push later on. So now we have this cleared up. So what we will do is we will uh, see um, how to uh, refactor our code such that we can use either database uh, or um, the in-memory storage, which we've used, which we used before. Uh, so here we have the in-memory storage um, students go which adds and remove uh, students from memory and here we have the database one uh, if we go to the API uh, you will notice that what we were doing we have been using the uh, we have been using the handle to the DB and in main we declared that the DB is the struct, which is the in-memory uh, storage, okay? What we would like to have is to have a type which both the in-memory or a data database support so that we can swap. We can either store students in memory or in, the, um, or in persistent storage. So instead of using students DB, which is this type uh, here or using database mongodb which is that type here what we want is we have to have some common type that both of these you know support so how can we do that well let's see if we modify this type to be um, student storage okay and then we can <coughs> either instantiate uh, one or the other then so if we want if we want in memory we would we would do this if we want uh, Mongo persistence we would do db equals students mongodb all right and if both of those work with this type then we we find all we need to do is we need to have um, a student storage um, type which is the interface which implements our 
um, four methods for accessing the data. Okay, so let's keep it in the student's um, file. Uh, that will be our kind of default implementation for the storage. Um, I will move the laptop because it's easier for me to type if I'm a little bit like this. Okay, so let's define the type uh, which will be student's storage, which will be the interface. And now the main should be fine. Um, the DB calls init and we don't have the init yet. Um, so we effectively need to have the four methods that we have on the students DB and students MongoDB, right? Um, so I to make it a little bit more verbose, I will refactor this to call, um, so I will refactor, rename the type that we've used before and add, I will call it in memory DB, okay? So it just asks me, okay, we have all those use cases everywhere I'm using it. I say, yeah, do refactor it. Uh, and it changes the comments and the references. So now we have students in memory DB and in database we have students MongoDB, right? It's cleaner to distinguish between these two types. Um, the second thing is we need those four methods. So we need init, add, count, and get, okay? So I need init method, um, add a student, I need get, and we were getting it by key, which was a string, and the final one was count, which returns an int. So count method which returns an int uh, get returns a student student excellent so we have now declared four methods in our interface init add get and count and um, in memory storage uses those four and database also uses those four. So the signature, so there is an init, add student, uh, count, and get. And our get actually returns student and bool. So we need to go back to student and say get returns a student and bool. And it needs to be in braces. Okay, so now I have in main, I have the type that um, students in memory DB as type student storage in assignment. Okay, let's check. Um, binary and unary expressions. So we are still missing something. Let's, let me check. Okay, let's try to build it. Uh, and we'll see. Uh, reply with student. Okay, so add method is wrong, right? You can see that the error message here says students in memory DB does not implement student storage correctly because the add method has a pointer receiver and our add method is, uh, so if we double check, um, the add method takes um, a student And it 
it has a pointer receiver right our s our method is also a student well Okay. So the um, the add method is has correct signature. Uh, let us check uh, what how are we using the um, so for example here we have um, the reference to DB uh, as a, not as a pointer, uh, but maybe we so so let's see api student 65 so if we check 65 we saying we are using the uh, pointer and we don't really want to be using a pointer uh, so reply with all students um, we will be yeah so we kind of a uh, return yeah we have to modify our api now to instead of using the struct or reference to struct um or pointer to struct we have to use the uh, student storage interface um, storage interface instead right um so you will see we have um we have to modify that so we say if count is zero so instead of doing that we have to say db count range so here we iterating over the uh the students so we already have a little bit of a problem because we know in this method we know something internal about the the students right so here we would have to have uh, a new method which returns us a collection of all the students uh, for this to work so instead yeah so let's let's leave it for for now i will modify this student storage and we using db we're using db here all right so here we are all good uh here we're missing the ability to return um uh all the students so we would have to say get all students and that will return us a slice over all the students that we have. Um, so let's go back to our students API and we'll say get single one or get all. All right, so let's call it get all and it will return us a slice over student. Uh, and we need to make sure that those two implementations have it. So let's go back. Here we will call it get all. And in our students, we don't have, we have get. We just need to add get all. 
and it returns a slice over student and we basically can return s uh, now we can return students okay so students is the map uh, we need to get um, we have to get the values right um, so how do we get all the values out of the um, a map well let's call them students it will be uh, it will be um, make slice of length uh, zero with capacity b students um, can actually count it and then what we need to do is we need to say let's call it all for uh, we don't care about the index so we get s and it will be in the range of db students what we do is we say all equals append all with s and then we can return all so here we getting a slice which is all the values from um yeah so here we have to say student uh, all the values from the map uh, and return it as a um, as get all call. So now if we go back to API student, now this should work and we have no problems here. So let's try to build it again. And we have um, line number 29 in main. So we right so uh what we can do okay um i had to um have a short break so coming back to the to our swap of the interface um let's see let's see what doesn't work um i have to fix this first so let's try let's try with this uh, and then we have um api student 65 api student 65 api student not api test yeah um i had to revert back my my changes uh from uh from the git repo so i i have to redo some of the bits here so uh student storage we need to say get all no count so if count is this then if db count db count is this and then here we say get all okay we change that we passing the interface directly okay and we have to implement the get all so uh, for get so get all returns 
all the students as size and we have function effectively like this and get all yeah apologies for this i have done a hard reset on the repo and lost the, some of the changes that i've already done um so here we say uh, all make student zero with the db count size and for index student in range db students i'm doing all equals append all s return all and slice of student all right uh, so that's for the in memory and for the database we've done the same so very quickly redo that get all key is gone student okay 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 we have we don't need that we say all is Student and we say all, all. Okay, and if it's not working, we return an empty slice. And if it's working, we return all. All right, um, we're not passing any parameters for the search we want all of them okay right so let's check it again let's check it again uh, so uh, api student 11 api student 11 if it's zero we do that uh db student storage yeah let me check students get all get all takes no parameters and returns a slice of student okay and then api student 67 okay api student 67 Happy student sixty seven reply with student reply with student takes students storage storage excellent all right so let's check that it works with main using the in memory database let's double check if, if it works also with the mongo implementation no it doesn't it complains it complains about main 31 yes so we use the uh, we use the reference the pointer i mean okay all right, so the, the, the final error is kind of interesting. So what this error says is, um, okay, let, let me try that. So if I do this, if I say I want to use DB and DB is a student's MongoDB, so our database um, implementation, so this one. And student's MongoDB uh, 
technically doesn't implement the interface. What implements the interface is the pointer to students MongoDB, not the students MongoDB by value, by but by pointer only. Okay, so if in my main, if I if I do this, the compiler complains that technically students MongoDB does not implement the storage interface because the add method takes a pointer receiver, not um, a normal receiver, not a pointer, right? So to make this compile, I have to either change so if, if I were to change, so if I go to the database and I change uh, that the add method takes um, a struct, not the pointer. So if I were to run the build again, now it says count doesn't take takes a pointer, right? I will have to change all those methods. So if I change all those methods to a regular type, then I can pass uh, a regular type as a substitute for the interface. But I don't want to do that. I want to be passing the pointers, in which case I cannot use, so if I do that again, I cannot use the student's Mongo plane as a substitute for student storage. I actually have to use the pointer instead. So if I do this, then it will work because it's the pointer so if I build it, it compiles now fine and it works, all right? So that's, um, at the moment, I can swap either in memory storage or a MongoDB storage for my handlers to use. They will use this global uh, DB variable to refer to whatever storage uh, compartment I'm using. And I can flip between the in-memory or in, um, persistent MongoDB storage instead. Um, I have, yeah, let's do a quick test. Uh, it doesn't work because I haven't fixed the tests yet. So API student test 90, API student test 90 is same story. I need to use the pointer and 126, I have to use pointer. Um, and 171, 171, same. I need to use the pointer. And we had a problem, we were not using the empty. We haven't initialized the database, so we have to initialize the database before we run the test. Okay, so let's retry it. Everything works fine. So all the tests work fine. Um, I haven't added the test for, so if I were to go to database tests, I don't have the test for get all. So let me just quickly add this. So all db get all if we not got the error uh, get all doesn't return proper slice of all the items um, so if is different than one or if all zero uh, student ID is different to uh, where is Tom student 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 ID then we say well we got something wrong something is not quite right so we double check that and it doesn't pass. Um, why? Let me check. Um, database test 81 and 109. Database test 
81 is doing this. Setup DB, let me see. Okay. Um, how the setup DB works? The setup DB should return a pointer. Actually, it does. Okay. So it returns the pointer. Um, ah, yeah, it's using Mongo and we are running Mongo Demon. That's okay. So, what can be wrong? Mm, a slice address. So, we missed. Um, in database line, it's line 109. We go here and we see that we should be returning an address to a slice. All right, let's retry that. Now it works fine. All right, so now our implementation had some bugs, which the test suit, you know, caught. Uh, even writing a simple test like we did with the, you know, um, where is it here? With those extra um, three lines of code, just, you know, calling the get all and checking that it works, um, caught the mistake that we had. Um, and we have successfully implemented uh, a an interface which um, so students um, storage represents a unified way of accessing data students data okay um, we could add error handling for example for adding a student because as as we've seen it before it was not too nice that adding a student was silently failing if we are trying to add a duplicate right so what we can do is we can say actually um, um, add student returns an error uh, and now you know all our implementations will not work we will have to say uh, add student return nil. Um, for the in memory one and for the database one, we will have add student returns an error as well. And then if there is an error, we return it. And if everything was fine, we return nil. So we will pass the information about a duplicate back to the implementation. So now if we try to run the tests, um, they still pass, um, pass fine. But in one of the tests, in the database test that we were doing, uh, where we were testing the duplicates and we were calling add, we can actually say if there is an error, um, then if error is different than nil, whoops, we will call error, error. Okay, so we will catch the, the duplicate situation um, and we will yeah, let's let's try it. We will have this case caught by the extra test here if um, if the um, if there was an error, basically, right? So if we were to add uh, a duplicate student, we would have um, the the error being caught here, which doesn't happen because it's the first type time that we that we adding um, Tom, 
And then if we adding Tom second time around, we can check check it now. And you know all the tests pass. And this case now um, says pass. And we also catch if there was um, an error adding the, the duplicate. Let me just check quickly. Uh, student add. If we adding the student. This this is different than nil. Yet in the test, oh yeah, I, we forgot to actually catch it. So the problem was that I want to catch this error and handle it uh, in the test, right? So. I want the test to fail right now because I want to catch that adding a duplicate causes the error to happen, right? So all I want to see is the test actually failing, right? And I do see it now. Uh, I see that the test fail. Um, so what my test should be specifying is I want to see if, if the error is nil, it means adding a duplicate didn't cause the error, right? So that is a problem. So then I would say um, adding duplicate entry should generate an error, but it doesn't, right? So if the error is nil, we have a problem. If we did throw an error, that means it's okay. And we're just checking uh, if the entry was not added to the, to the collection, right? So now if I double check that, I should have the original test passing, but I'm making sure that this error is actually generated every time I'm trying to add a duplicate student. Okay, so I'm ensuring that the indexes are enforcing certain rules. All right, so um, that covers it all. Uh, we have um, implemented the, um, we have uh, implemented our interface. So I will run go format on my code to see if I have some, some problems. I will check. Okay. Do I have any problems with formatting? No. Do I have some vet problems? No. Do I need to lint correct and linter errors? Yes. One uh, database 100. Get all doesn't have a comment. Database 100 uh, get all returns a slice with with all the students. Okay, everything is clean and tidy. I will say git status. We'll see what we need to do. We need to add those six files. So I will add them all in a single commit. So I will say git commit all um, implementing the generic interface for data for student data storage. Okay, and we'll push all the changes to the repository. So that concludes that that session, um, and we have a reusable uh, implementation of the uh, generic interface, which allows us to swap be easily between persistent storage and in-memory storage. What what is it useful for? We already have been using it for doing tests. So in our API tests, we've been mocking the storage using the um, in-memory database instead of using Mongo. 
because when we're trying to test the routes and trying to test the, the handlers, we actually don't care about the storage. We care about the handlers and the way they operate and the storage can be arbitrary. So in our case, we just mocking the storage using the in-memory. Uh, but for real deployment in main, we want to be using a persistent storage with, uh, with MongoDB. All right, so thank you very much and see you next time. Bye.